Hey there, welcome to Geeky Greenhouse. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to grow garlic from clove to bulb. Garlic is one of my favorite crops to grow just because it's so easy. If you have some decent soil and you get the timing right, it's just so simple. So in this video, I'll show you the process from planting your cloves in the fall to harvesting in the summer. So garlic is one of those plants that's just amazingly easy to grow. You set it up in the fall time and come midsummer, you have fresh garlic to harvest. So first, why do you plant garlic in the fall? The reason is that each clove requires a cold period. It needs exposure to freezing weather to stratify and essentially divide into multiple cloves and a new bulb. Now timing is the most important factor to consider when you're planting your garlic in the fall. So you wanna plant right around your expected first fall frost. The ground isn't freezing through at that first frost, and so that will give the garlic enough time to set their roots in, but not enough time to start growing foliage. For us here in zone six, we typically plant right at the end of October or in the first week or two of November, depending on the weather. This year it's actually very warm. It's currently 70 degrees outside and it's November 7th, but we're gonna plant today because we have some really cold weather coming ahead of us. Now there are two types of garlic. There are hard neck varieties and soft neck varieties. If you live in a colder climate like us where you get a longer winter, hard neck is typically the way to go. But if you wanna store your garlic for longer or if you live in a warmer climate, then soft neck varieties are probably the best choice. You can easily tell them apart by checking the center of the bulb. Hard neck varieties will have a hard main stem, hence the name hard neck, and soft neck varieties will not have that. But regardless of what type of garlic you choose, you're gonna plant it the same way and at the same time. One more tip before we get planting our garlic is to order your seed garlic way ahead of time because dedicated garlic farms tend to sell out pretty quickly and they run pre-sales which tend to go fast. So you wanna find the varieties you wanna grow, get an order in ahead of time like you would for tulip bulbs or anything else that you plant in the fall. That way you can guarantee that you're gonna have seed garlic to plant. Seed garlic is different from garlic you would buy at the store. By choosing varieties that you want to grow, you know exactly what you're going to get the next year. If you plant garlic that you buy at the store, it may not grow that well in your climate. So I highly recommend going to a trusted seed garlic supplier like Fillory Farm or Botanical Interests. Both of those are great suppliers to get an early garlic order in. So it's early November, so let's head outside and plant some garlic. Okay, so we're out here in our chosen planting location for the garlic. And I've got four different varieties. They're all hard neck just because of our climate. But regardless of what type you're planting, you'll plant it the same way and at the same time. So to start off, you wanna clear off any mulch that you might have in your garden bed. We had some straw here that I just pushed aside. And if the soil is compacted at all, you can just loosen it up with a fork. So I'll use this chestnut red variety as an example just because it has these picture perfect bulbs. So we always like to keep the bulbs whole until we're ready to plant. So you'll sort of disassemble these just before planting. So you just wanna carefully remove each individual clove. And the larger the clove is, the larger the resulting bulb will be. So you kinda of wanna pick and choose. If you don't have room for all of the cloves, you can use some of them in the kitchen and then plant the largest and most suitable cloves in the garden. So you wanna to try to avoid any of the clove being exposed. It's not the end of the world if it does get exposed but there is a greater chance that it will rot, especially if there's high moisture levels. Okay, so I've removed all of the individual cloves. I counted 15, and we're gonna start by just making a long trench where we plan to plant the garlic, and you wanna make it about three to four inches deep. So just pulling back a nice deep trench all the way along. So you wanna plant the cloves flat side down and the pointed side up. This is where the roots will start to form and this is where the foliage will start to grow up. It's really obvious with this clove, but others can be a little bit trickier. So if you're having a hard time telling, just plant it sideways and the plant will figure it out and grow upwards. So you wanna space your cloves about three to five inches apart and just pop them in one by one. So next you just backfill in with the surrounding soil. And fill in the trench. And then use a plant label to label which variety you just planted. If you're planting multiple varieties, it's great to know which one is which because later in the season you're gonna find out which ones store best, which ones taste best, and ultimately which ones grow best in your area. 
So again, you wanna space the bulbs three to four inches apart and then space your rows about six inches apart. Or as an alternative, you can actually interplant your garlic along with your other vegetable crops. So right around the base of where you plan to plant some tomatoes or peppers, you can plant a few garlic bulbs because they really don't take up too much space in the garden. It's a very tall, slender plant that easily fits in where others might not. Garlic also likes to be planted in full sun, although it will tolerate some shade. Try to give it as much sun as possible. Plant it on the south facing side of other taller plants to make sure that it gets as much sun as possible. Next, we wanna help insulate the garlic from the harsh cold of the winter. And for that, you can really just use any mulch if you have straw or leaf mulch like I have here, or even fallen pine needles will work. That's what we used last year. Anything to insulate the soil and also protect the soil from erosion over the winter. So you just wanna apply a generous layer of the mulch between two and three inches thick. And garlic has no problem pushing up through the mulch in the springtime. And the last thing is to just gently water it in. You don't wanna go dumping too much water on. You don't want the garlic bulbs to rot. But just enough water to sort of wake them up, have them start growing their root systems out and get them settled into the soil. One other thing you could do to prepare the soil is add a little bit of fertilizer, some all-purpose slow-release fertilizer, or some compost just to enrich the soil before the garlic goes in. But we prefer not to do that in the fall because we know that our soil still has plenty of fertility. Okay, so I'll finish planting this and let's check back in in the springtime when our garlic is sprouting. So this year we had an odd warm spell in January and our garlic sprouted prematurely. Don't worry too much if this happens as the foliage will die back again when the frost returns. Moving forward to late March, our garlic began sprouting once again and this time for good. The early foliage may be a bit yellowed and that's okay. The plants can struggle to access nutrients from the cold soil. By April 9th, our garlic was growing strong and gaining size every day. And you can see the distinctly different foliage of each variety. Moving forward into mid-May, our plants are thriving in the sunshine, and it's around this time you may start to notice scapes forming on your hardneck garlic. So that brings us to now, early June, and as you can see, the plants have grown quite a bit. They're about three feet tall, and this is a good time to check in because it's just about time to prune the scapes off of our hardneck garlic. If you're growing softneck garlic, you don't have to worry about this because your plants don't have scapes, but if you're growing hardneck like we are, you'll have to prune off these things right here. This is effectively the plant's method of producing flowers. And if we leave these to grow on the plant, then it will focus energy on producing that flower instead of focusing on producing a larger bulb. The best time to prune your scapes is when they form sort of a P shape where they've curled around on themselves one time, crossing over the base of the stem, something like this. If it's curled more than once, it's gone a little bit past, but it's not too late. You should still prune it off. It just may be a little bit tougher if you wanna actually eat it, which you can and you should because these are very delicious. It's sort of like a mild version of garlic. So to take them off, I like to use a nice sharp pair of pruning shears and cut just at the base of the scape right above the top leaves of the plant. So here are some good examples of some garlic scapes. This one is right at the perfect time for pruning. This one's definitely a little bit past. You can see it's much larger and thicker and the plant has sent too much energy into creating this, but again, better late than never. The next step will be harvesting the garlic. And this usually happens about a month after we prune our scapes, give or take, depending on the weather. But as you can see, these plants are huge. The stalks are nice and thick, and I'm sure those bulbs underneath the ground are developing nicely. So let's check back in in about a month to harvest. So it's now just over a month later and it's time to harvest our garlic. It's midsummer and our garlic is looking tired. There's some dieback on the lower leaves and that is actually our indication that it's time to harvest. The best way to know your garlic is ready to harvest is when about half of the leaves are fully died back. So count the total number of leaves on your plant and make sure that you count the very bottom leaves which can be very small and withered. And then counting up from the bottom you want about half of the leaves to be dead. So if there are 10 leaves on your garlic, five of them should be fully died back and the other five should still have a little bit of life to them. That's how you know it's the perfect time to pick it. 
So this plant here has nine total leaves and about five of them are totally dead. And the sixth one is starting to die off. So this is a good time to pick. So you don't wanna just go and pull up your garlic. That will risk breaking the main stem and that will affect your storage life negatively. So you wanna use a trowel or a hori hori or even a pitchfork will work and dig around the base of the plant, loosening up the soil before you pull it out. So just a gentle prying motion and there you go. And the reason you don't want to harvest your garlic too late is that the cloves will begin to separate from one another and that really impacts your overall storage time. But it's okay if you do harvest late, you can use that garlic right away or preserve it in one way or another. Now I'm not going to go in depth on curing and storing your garlic for the long term. We have another video about harvesting and storing garlic so I'll link that in the description below if you're interested. But at this point your garlic is ready to either use right away or you can cure it, store it, preserve it, or save your own cloves to plant again in the fall. Now, if you do wanna store your garlic, it's important not to disturb anything. You don't wanna cut off the leaves or the roots, and you don't wanna wash them with water or especially not soap, because that will negatively affect the long-term storage of your garlic. So just brush off some of the dirt, get them inside, and get them into a well-ventilated area where they can cure for a week or two. Now, if you've planted multiple garlic varieties, you may notice that some are ready for harvest earlier than others. That certainly happened with our garlic this year, and some of them were a little bit past. Here's the difference between harvesting garlic at the right time versus a little bit too late. You can see the cloves are separating a bit, and there's not much of that papery protectant around your garlic bulb. And again, that will decrease storage life. But the garlic is still usable and perfectly delicious. Just make sure that you use any late harvested garlic first. And here's another comparison. This garlic bulb did not have its scape removed, and you can see the bulb is much smaller than the other plants that had the scapes removed. That just shows how the energy was directed upwards instead of down underground into producing that larger bulb. If you have any tips or varieties of garlic that you recommend, please leave them in the comments below. One of my favorites this year is the Chesnock Red. It's got nice big cloves on a good sized bulb as well with an amazing flavor. Make sure you check the links in the description if you wanna buy some seed garlic and grow your own at home. And thanks for watching Geeky Greenhouse.